congratulate your team. Alright. Thank you. It was great to get you. Good talk. I wish you a wonderful day. I think it's quite natural for me to be here. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm the first knowledge worker who suffered a defeat from an intelligent machine. Uh, though I always say Deep Blue was not intelligent, it was just brute force. But I have personal experience uh, fighting machines and then working with machines. Machines are getting faster and, and, and you may call it smarter, though I don't think machine operates with these terms, it's very human. So they're getting faster and, and more powerful. It's a Moore's law and uh, today I remind people that a free chess app in, 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 on their mobile device is stronger than Deep Blue. Uh, but it's not just about machines getting uh, faster uh, or stronger, it's about us actually looking for or inventing new interfaces. Because at the end of the day, it's, the machines still have their limitations. And the future, the, uh, the, the art of the uh, uh, future development is how to give an opportunity for humans to, to uh, inject or to invest our unique human qualities to compensate for machines' deficiencies. Because no machine will ever make 100% make performance. It doesn't exist in the universe. So there will be always room for humans to make the difference. I don't think that the beauty and the suspense of this competition will be washed away by machines getting so strong. Actually, it's, it's, it's the, today there's even more excitement for general public to watch because when I played, say, Anatoly Karpov 30 years ago, the public didn't understand what we were doing because they looked at the board and it was like, you know, two you know, saints playing at the chessboard and even grandmasters were afraid to criticize us. Even if we made a blunder, eh, they were not sure, but who knows, maybe they, we, we are simple mortals, we don't know. Today, every amateur could just look at a computer screen and say, oh, Magnus Carlsen, the world champion, made a big mistake because machine tells you, tells you that. So it's, it's annoying for me as a former world champion that some total amateurs can criticize the big, big players, but at the same time, it enables millions of people to follow the game. So that's why, again, it's, it's always, you know, it's just the coin, the coin has two sides. So yes, there are, there, there are potential negatives, but I believe that it's, when you look at the balance, it's always positive. I personally welcome our new AI overlords. I think that they will do a great job and I support them um, in their mission. Uh, you know, I think that one thing um, will always be true. Uh, at some point, if AI gets evil, um, it's going to stop and there will be a message displayed saying that you need to upgrade to the latest version of the Java virtual machine and the AI program will come to a screeching halt and humanity will be saved. So that's what I'm counting on.
-hmm. You know, if something new comes out, maybe people get afraid of it. Like VR is going to ruin everything. Um, or AI, it's going to run rampant and, and destroy the world because somehow we're going to give it access to everything that it exists. Um, you know, the, the, as a programmer, I know that that's not going to happen. I mean, we have so many uh, nowadays. There is so much technology for sandboxing code to not hurt anything. Like security is so huge that security is protecting us from the AI that may go rampant. It can go rampant in its little sandbox little area and ruin the virtual machine that it's in and go, well, let's not do that again. But it's not going to reach the outside world unless like idiots decide to hook it up to the internet and allow it to go anywhere and do anything, right? And I think anyone that's serious is, is, is uh, uh, seriously afraid of AI is going to keep it sandboxed and, and uh, you know, keep it safe.